For a concrete example of Taylor's theorem, let's take a look at the geometric power series. So recall Taylor's theorem says, I'm going to have my function f of x, we do n plus 1 derivatives on some interval i, and it's going to contain our center x0. Then there's going to be an x prime between x and x0, such that the nth remainder function that's given by taking your function, subtract off your nth Taylor polynomial. Okay, that's just going to be the error. We're going to have an estimate from the Taylor polynomial. We're going to have the actual value. So actual minus estimate gives us error. Then with this x prime, we'll actually be able to set a remainder equal to exactly the n plus first derivative of f evaluated at that x prime times x minus x zero to the n plus one power divided by n plus one factorial. So what's happening here, if I wanted to go out to the n plus first Taylor polynomial, I would want to add on a term that looks like this. The only difference is I would want an x zero in this spot instead of x prime. Okay, so point of this example is going to convince you when you do estimates, you're much better off using this business of maximums instead of trying to find the point where this equality happens. So what I'm going to do here is, for the geometric power series, we'll find the point where we get equality. Okay, so geometric power series, the function we start with is going to be f of x equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, let's crank out our Maclaurin Taylor coefficients. So f0 is going to be equal to 1. The first derivative is going to be 1 minus x to the minus 2. Just note, I would bring the minus 1 down, take 1 off the minus 1 up here to get the minus 2, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is a minus 1. So we're never going to have a minus sign out in the front. Okay, we'll get a minus coming down from the exponent, and then chain rule on the inside brings another minus out. So it's always going to stay positive. All right, and then you notice the pattern's going to be exponents keep accumulating out in front to give us k factorial. And then if we take the exponent that goes with k, that's going to be minus k plus 1. If I want my Taylor coefficient that goes with k, that's going to be a sub k equal to 1 because the kth derivative evaluated 0 is going to be k factorial. To get a sub k, I divide by k factorial, so I'm left with this. So from that, I can get my geometric power series centered at 0. Okay, our Taylor polynomial is just going to be p sub n of x equal to 1 plus x all the way up through x sub n. Okay, remember we can clean this up a little bit. If I multiply by x, that's going to give me just shift everything over to the right by 1, and then I pick up an x to the n plus 1. Take the difference, that's going to give me 1 minus x to the n plus 1, and then we divide by 1 minus x to get this in this nice closed form. Now, if I take the difference of f, and this piece of nx, remember we're using f as 1 over 1 minus x, that's going to give me x to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x. Now, what I want to do is, we're going to take a concrete case with x equal to 1 half, n equal to 4, and I want to get this side equal to this side, which means we'll get a number here, we'll get numbers for most of this, the only thing that will be left is this x prime, and then I want to solve for the x prime. And then we'll make sure that it winds up in the region that we're interested in. There's a lot of things to unpack, so let's do it one at a time. The easy thing, we'll be able to get the remainder, fourth one, at one half. Okay, we have this formula here, so if n is equal to four and x is equal to a half, we have a half to the fifth over a half, which is gonna give me 1 16th. So it's gonna be half my equality. That's gonna be the piece that's right here. Next, we're going to need to get this piece. I first have to get the fifth derivative of f evaluated at some x prime. Okay, well, we already did this over here. So if I want to get the fifth derivative, it's going to be 5 factorial times 1 minus x to the minus 6. So that's going to be like this. And now we're going to go one step further. I'm going to multiply it by, okay, our x is 1 half. x0 is the center, which is 0. And we're going to raise that. Okay, that n is equal to 4, so we're going to raise that to the fifth power, so it's going to be 1 half to the fifth. And then the bottom, n is equal to 4, so I have 5 factorial. So if you notice, if I take our fifth derivative of f at x prime, put it in here, 
the five factorials are going to cancel, and then I'll wind up with a 1 minus x prime to the sixth in the denominator. Okay, 1 half to the fifth is 1 32nd, so I could put the 32 in the denominator also. Now, I'm going to set this thing equal to this thing, solve for x prime. So that's going to give me 1 16th equals 1 32nd, 1 minus x prime to the sixth power. We push things to the other side to get them above in the numerator. So it's going to be 1 minus x prime to the sixth is equal to a half. And then when I clean that up, so what I'll do is I'll take the sixth, 1 sixth exponent of each side. And that's going to be when I push the 1 over and the x prime over. Okay, we do that all in one step. It's going to give me x prime is equal to 1 minus the sixth root of 1 half. We actually crank out what that number is going to be. That's going to be about 0.1. So that's definitely going to be a number that's between 0 and 1 half. And that's what the theorem promises. We're going to find an x prime that lives between your x and your x0. x0 is 0. x is 1 half, such that you get this equation holding. OK, what's the point of this? The point is you really don't want to go hunting down x prime. You'd rather do some general argument where you use a maximum when you do your estimation.